Hey guys, Tim Mubel here with TACCOM. Uh, we're going to talk about recoil um, and a good inexpensive way to get rid of it in your 9mm. I've got a sheet of paper here. This uh, is a file. I'm going to show it on the video. We're going to talk about bolt travel and how much bolt travel you need. You know, bolts, when the gun goes bang, the bolt goes back, you know, and how much, how much is enough and how much is too much and how much isn't enough more than anything. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's this magical word short stroke out there. And uh, yeah, this is short stroke, but we're gonna go over, we're gonna go over uh, mil spec buffer and uh, how much how much that opens up if you have a mil spec uh rifle with a mil spec buffer and a mil spec spring the travel of this bolt is three and a half inches this particular gun that i'm using for competition total travel on the bolt is two and a half inches I feel that's minimum travel you need in an AR9 to reset the trigger. Can you do it less? Yes. This one, I, I can reset the trigger on this uh, AR at uh, oh, about an inch and, inch and three eighths. Uh, it's not really reliable though at picking up the next round. So I kept going back and then I, you know, two inches was comfortable, but everything felt right at about two and a half. So, but it's a lot less than mil spec, that's for sure. So, but we're gonna show you just how I got to two and a half inches. We're gonna show you how you can uh, modify a uh, uh, recoil, a uh, mil spec recoil system to be a lot less felt recoil and it costs like 24 bucks. I mean, it's, you, you, it's the best money spent for uh, reducing the recoil. I, I, I tell people it's the cheapest you're gonna get away with and have a really good recoiling rifle. Not great, but it's gonna be heads and shoulder better than what it was. So let's get into the video and uh, you're gonna see a chart I've got charts. I'm, I'm actually going to show you our compression, uh, uh, our compression uh, fixture that I made, and it'll show you when uh, a second stage comes into effect and how far um, how far you travel with that second stage. Uh, some interesting things to note: the bolt. I tell people the bolt has to come back an inch and an eighth from the breech. It has to come back that far um, because that's when, at an inch and an eighth to an inch and a quarter, that's when you're ejecting uh, the spent cartridge. And that's also about the area at which the bolt clears the next round in the magazine so that it can push it up. The problem comes in, like I say, is getting that trigger reset and that's where the AR, that's where the pitfall is on the AR-15. It was developed for a much longer cartridge. So that trigger does have to come back. You know, if we, if, if we were designing this from the ground up and some people have, uh, the bolt doesn't travel half as far as it does in an AR-15. Um, so uh, let's get into it and see what happens. Uh, we'll answer that question, how far do you have to go back to reset the trigger? So let's see what happens. Hope, uh, hope you enjoy the video. Uh, have a great time watching it. Take care. Here's a chart that pretty much shows uh, all the travels of the four systems I'm doing here today. I'll also have a copy of this in the comments. Okay, let's see where you, if we can do this. Here is a cutaway view of the AR9 upper 
in a KE arms lower with a KE arms trigger. So uh, just to tell you which where the parts are, here's the bolt. Here's our magazine, has a, mag has a round in it. This right here, the shiny, the lighter colored part, that's part of the ejector, that's important. Here's the hammer on the trigger, and here is the bolt hold open. So uh, let's talk about what your bolt is going to do uh, when the gun goes bang. So what'll happen is, First thing that'll happen is it's gonna come back and I'm gonna open this to about where the ejector is just sticking out. Okay, right there. So now, right in here, you can start to see where the ejector is starting to come out. Well, when it comes to this point, you have already ejected your round out of the gun. The spent round has already come back. And that, that distance from here to here is about an inch and a quarter, okay? You can see that it's still, the bolt is still covering the, uh, the round that's there. So how, now it's got to come back a little bit more. There, there's the next round. And at that position, that's about an inch and three eighths, inch and a half from here to here. So this is the minimum travel you need to eject around and to feed around. But did you cock the hammer? We don't know that yet. That's a totally different discussion and that's all de very much dependent on your bolt and your hammer. So, uh, so let's say, so you need a minimum, let's just say a minimum of an inch and a half of travel. We'd like to have more and that's just to, to clear around and be able to feed the next round in. But let's say you're one of those, you've got to go to bolt hold open. You have to have bolt hold open. So you've got to come back to this point right here till the bottom of the bolt comes behind your bolt hold open. And at that point, it's about from here to here is two and seven eighths of an inch. So you're basically having to go from this point here, another inch and a half to get to bolt hold open. Well, and at that time, I will clearly tell you that if you've got any popular hammer on the market, you've uh, cocked your hammer at this point. So, but this is just to get manual bolt hold open. You've probably got to come back to about here because you need dwell time. You got to you know, the bolt coming back. So you've probably got to, if you want to have a solid last round bolt hold open, your travel is going to be about three inches from here to here, okay? Uh, let's talk about what the mil spec travel is. The mil spec travel is about to here. Now I know the number, it's an inch and three quarter. So this, if you have a mil spec buffer system in a mil spec bolt this is how far your bolt is traveling uh in a mil with a mil spec buffer and a mil spec spring and it really the bolt really safely the bolt really only needs to travel to about here to recock your hammer and that distance is about two and a quarter inches. So realistically, you're, you're needing about two and a quarter to, you know, minimum. And I recommend having, uh, I recommend having about, oh, yeah, roughly about 
No, about two and a half minimum for a carbine buffer system. So I, I tend to recommend if you want to have reliable hammer, about two and, a, two and a half minimum. So that's really about the safe travel for a competition gun. Can you go a little less than that? Yeah, you can. Uh, can you go more? Oh yeah, you can go more. You can go all the way to 375. But this is just explaining what the travel does. Uh, this particular hammer, I've got this uh, in, when I run this gun in competition with my other upper and I have my buffer system in there, I'm running at about, just about two and a half inches of travel. And I'm running the, uh, I'm running the uh, uh, TACCOM adjustable buffer and the, uh, Smith and the the cushion that we make for the Smith and Wesson response, but that I, I recommend about two and a half inches minimum of travel uh, for a competition gun. You'll get reliable ignition, and you'll get reliable feeding. So I hope this helps some. Let's get back to it. Okay, so we have our uh, compression rig here. And uh, here it is. This right now, if you look on this on it, it's got it's numbered. Three. This is three inches, four inches, five. And right now I have a stand uh, a mil spec length carbine buffer in here. And you can. This is what the spring looks like in there when it compresses. It just is a single action going down. It actually goes down to three and three quarter. And it's just a spring. You can see the spring almost goes to lock up. Uh, that's a, a, one of the TACCOM enhanced carbine springs. So it's, uh, but that's uh, three and three quarter travel on a mil spec buffer system in your AR9. Okay, next up in our uh, compression rig. We have the uh, mil spec buffer length, and now we've added the uh, three quarter inch response cushion. So you'll wanna pay attention to see when this heads starts to head out. Now on the uh, mil spec buffer, uh, when I pushed down, on this notice that the uh, wave spring is not compressing okay here is where I just solid up the uh, mil spec buffer length and we're at about three and a quarter inches a little more so now at this point we can compress now it takes a little bit more force now we can compress that uh, wave spring. So if you look, it stays solid, and now you get the second stage. So this is, realistically, this is the least expensive way to, to reduce the recoil on your AR9. Factory buffer and our cushion, wave spring cushion. Okay, next up, we have the, uh, our original uh, TACCOM adjustable recoil system. Uh, and I've got that in this contraption. Okay, you can see, if you look kind of, you can see the pin, that's the, uh, that's the second stage there. So if we uh, put this down and we press, you'll see that to the second stage it's about two and a half you know you can hear a definite stop there and then after that so it comes back travels about two and a half inches to hit the second stage now that second stage puts the brakes on and it starts to compress and that's where you get your increased weight on uh load on the spring okay on to the next one Finally, 
here we go. This is the last one. This is actually my system that I run in my personal gun. And when I say my system, I literally took it out of my gun uh, to do this for you. So um, as you can tell, now I've added the uh, three quarter inch cushion and uh, and I've got the the TACCOM adjustable recoil system. This is in a carbine buffer tube, remember, because that's my KE arms lower. I can only go carbine buffer length. But this is what I'm running in mine. So if I push down, you'll see that now I got about an inch and a half to the second stage and you can kind of see it bouncing and all there and then to go the rest of the way it bottoms out at two and a half inches so I have what I believe is the shortest stroke I can have and feel confident that I'm gonna have the gun running shot to shot uh, but this is what I'm running the uh, uh, Supervel 100 grain ammo with and it is a super soft system. I've got a video of showing the recoil of this system but really you know and I, uh, you'll see the chart in this video that'll talk about how far are these systems and uh, well I hope you get a lot of uh, information out of this. I'm doing this so that you guys can uh, make a more informed decision.